Hi, this is Phil, Dirty Drive Away. Welcome to 2020. So, uh, something a bit out of the ordinary. Um, today I'm gonna be doing a video, don't know how long it's gonna be, and we're gonna be looking at these Interpump S284 safety relief valves. And you may or may not have one of these on your washer. Uh, these are predominantly fitted to machines that have got higher output pumps. So obviously my machine has got 350 bar pump, uh, which is obviously restricted to 250 bar. And these are basically a uh, fail safe device. So if there is excess pressure, the safety relief valve kicks in uh, and obviously you have a um, output uh, barb here, which basically just goes to ground. So outside the, uh, the van or if you're using the machine outside, it will just, um, it will just waste away. So you'll also find that if you're on and off the trigger, you'll get small dribbles of water coming out here as it releases the excess pressure. So you'll mainly find these if you've got something like the Evolution 3 engine um, models, uh, the, you know, the Briggs and Stratton engines that have got the big 350 bar pump, you would probably no doubt seen that you've got one of these screwed into the side of the pump. Uh, and I've been having, as you see, I've got three of these here. Uh, I've been having a few issues with mine, uh, as you can see, as I've got three, this is not the first time this has happened. And basically what happens over time is uh, there's something obviously inside that wears and you'll find that when you're dealing with uh, you know, full pressure, over the course of time, the trigger will start to cut in and cut out like it's pulsing. Um, and the water will spray, it will cut, it will spray, it will cut. Uh, obviously this can be an unloader issue, um, but if you've got water coming out of the bottom of the um, of this uh, output hose um, here, you would normally find that there is an issue with this safety relief valve. From If you bought your uh, washer from a, a supplier, which no doubt you did, um, obviously uh, something like the Evolution 3 engine, which is made by dual pumps, uh, you'll find that this will be fitted and it will have some kind of uh, lock wire through these small holes and it will be basically locked. These are preset um, when the uh, machines are made. Now obviously you can adjust them. Uh, obviously if you back these out, the, the, uh, the threshold of the pressure before it releases will be a lot lower. These are 280 bar relief valves. So obviously if you've got a 250 bar washer, you'll probably find this is gonna be wound pretty much all the way in. Um, so that obviously once this hits its max of 280 bar, or if you can set it at two, you know, 270, 260, whatever you want the threshold to be before this cuts in, um, you can adjust that, but you would need some form of pressure gauge on your pump to obviously be able to set this, set the unloader. Um, so obviously it may be out of the realms of some people, but this video is predominantly to show you what these are and how they actually work. Um, so obviously mine's gone a little bit whiffy recently, so I've bought a brand new one. So this is a brand new, um, I wrote new on it so I don't get it mixed up. This is a brand new safety relief valve, um, which I'm due to fit anytime soon. And this is an old one which I had, and this is the one I've just taken off the washer, which I have conveniently sectioned out so we can see exactly what's inside. We'll come to that in a moment. Um, so yeah, so basically this is an old one, uh, and inside, as you can see, they're very, very basic. It is just, um, it's just, it's just like a little a seat in there, like a ceramic seat with a, um, a very high pressured spring. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, I'm gonna need a big screwdriver for this to un to undo them. Um, but basically, yeah, all you've got is a cap, a spring, and there's a seat. Um, so we'll use this section one for the time being, just basically show you what's inside these. Um, I've taken, already you can see there's a circlip on the end, I've already taken the circlip off because this one's been cut apart. Um, so this will basically just pop off and there will be a couple of O-rings inside. Let's just see if I can zoom you in a little bit. Alright, let's pop that one to the side. So you'll see there will be a couple of O-rings come on focus, that will sit in these grooves which basically seal this cap. So inside what you simply got is screw, spring and then right down here you can't really see at the moment where the o-ring is you've got a ceramic seat which sits inside a little hole. So this is quite straightforward, just unscrew this, chuck it on the far floor. The spring comes out you can now see this seat 
Uh, you, if you're going to take it apart, obviously you won't be able to see it in it. But you just pop that out. And that is, that is basically it. So you've got this little kitty here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I've not figured out the reason why mine's not working, but I would imagine it is something to do with the seat here. Um, because it sits inside, I'll get it here. It sits inside this little brass hole. So that seats into that hole. And obviously because of the pressure and every time you're on and off the trigger, this will basically pulse just to let a little bit of water out of that um, that relief valve. So this will be almost pulsing quite a lot. So you may find, I will look at the new one, that this starts to wear around this edge in here, which may cause seating issues and that you can't wind it in all the way. Um, so basically, because you adjust these by screwing this in, obviously it's only got a maximum amount before it bottoms out uh, which will obviously be your maximum pressure. So that's all you've got in there. I'll pop that back in. And then the cap. So you'll see that that's obviously going to be on its minimum setting. And then obviously you could, I don't know, it's quite a strong spring, but you could technically move that in and out obviously you've got a lot of pressure from the machine so as you wind this in i'm not going to wind it all the wings i'm not too sure how uh, how clever this is going to be with a spring don't want it pinging off in my face as you wind this in the pressure on that spring gets more and more and more intense so obviously it will take a lot more pressure for it to for it to um compress so basically what happens is you can't see it because i've cut it um it's under here but right where my finger is, just there, would have been a very, very small hole. And obviously that cap fits on like so. And you'll see that there is a small, very small gap around the outside. So once that spring comes back and it releases enough to bypass that hole, it pushes the water out of here, thus releasing the pressure. It's a very, very simple device, and they are quite well worth fitting to most washers. Uh, obviously, if you've got a 250 bar pump, um, you can you can fit one of these. It's, it'll give a good indication, like if you've got a block nozzle or something like that, um, something uh, that's gonna cause a blockage will obviously give you increased pressure. So rather than you thinking, oh, okay, it's, it's, you know, it's fine, um, rather than straining your pump, it might not be a lot, but if you've only got a 250 bar pump, um, obviously you can over pressurize the system so you could be putting out 260 270 and not actually realizing it but you're putting a lot of strain on the pump um, so basically this would kick in and you would know straight away on the lance the lance would just almost just cut out immediately in your hand uh, you would know straight away that there's something wrong um, sometimes these can these can back out so obviously if you have got a pressure gauge on your pump and you can see, you, you, you would see from the pressure gauge that the, um, the pressure is increased. Obviously, these are not foolproof. Uh, as you can see, I've got, I've, you know, I've got three of them in front of me. Um, if they're not lock wired off, um, you'll find that the, from the vibrations of the pump and the machine, you may find these may start to back off a little bit, only ever so slightly. So over the course of time, you may have to readjust these. And also if that seat wears, you would lose a little bit of spring tension. Now obviously it might not be a lot of spring tension, but a very, very small adjustment on here can make a massive difference to actually what this device does. Um, so even just a quarter of a turn on here can be the difference between this cutting out a 250 bar or 260 bar. Um, so that's why you'd ideally need a pressure gauge on the pump before you start messing with these. Uh, if you spoke to, to dual pumps or anyone like that, they would say, look, don't touch these um, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, I'm sure there are other videos on YouTube which show setting these up alongside your unloader valve with a pressure gauge um, so that you know you know exactly what you're doing. Because uh, obviously if you, if you wind these too far in or you back them out, if you back it out, you're not gonna get full pressure. The machine's gonna cut out uh, and obviously you know, if you've got a lower um, pressure pump, let's say you're running a 200 bar pump 
and you wind this in too far, um, obviously it's not going to cut out at, at 200 bar. It's only going to it'll cut out at 250. So you'd need a lot, lot more pressure before this thing would activate. Hence the reason why they probably don't fit these to um, to lower pressure machines. Um, but yeah, if you have got one of these on your machine and you are experiencing um, hesitation in the trigger, so you pull the trigger and it cuts in, cuts out, cuts in, cuts out, this will be the first place to look. These are not overly expensive. They're about 35 quid and they're very easy to replace. They literally just unscrew. You just get, a, I think, a 22 mil socket or a spanner on the end of them, unscrew it, a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on the end and throw a new one in. Um, but again, you may have to readjust it um, you know, it's um, they're not really to be toyed with if you've got a low spec, you know, low pressure machine. If you've got a 250 bar pump, and these are rated at 280 bar, you could technically wind this all the way in, maybe back it out, quarter, half a turn, and that should be almost spot on. Um, but obviously, if it's wound in too far, it's not going to do the job that you want it to do on a lower a lower spec pump. So that's pretty much it. Um, I say that's that's the old sectioned one. Let's just zoom me back out. That one, don't know what's wrong with that. I never actually took it apart. But this is the new one. So let's just have a quick let's just take this out. I mean there's not so there's not really much you can do with them. I mean you could possibly measure something like the spring length or something like that, but you know, a small variation in spring length. You can see this one's brand new. Let's just see if we can gently pop the seat out it's difficult to really pick it up on the camera but I'll take a let's leave that one there let's just take this one out real quick I want to get these two mixed up Zoom it back in, see so we have a look at these close up. Okay, so on this one that's giving me grief, there's clearly more of a taper on the end of the, the ceramic tip. Get a schmoo on the end. So, yeah, there's clearly more of a taper on the end, uh, obviously, where it keeps pulsing, so that may be the issue. You can just, just see. It'll focus. That's quite a, quite a straight angle, and that one there tends to want to kick up at the end. So this may be seating a little bit further inside that um, that hole. So yeah, that's it. Obviously, I'm no uh, I'm no specialist on these. You know, I'm quite happy to take something apart. Um, they're very very basic. Like I say, if you are having issues, you can't buy replacement parts for these. Um, they are all um, they're all one unit. So as far as I'm aware, you may be able to chuck new O-rings in. Um, the only thing, the only other thing these have, um, which you will see on the one that hasn't been cut open, you've got a small little hole there. Um, basically, all that hole does uh, is because this chamber uh, is technically sealed. Uh, let's just pop that back in there. This chamber is sealed. Back in there. You'll find that if the seals go on here, like if they start to perish and it's letting water by, it will basically come out of that hole there. So as long as that hole's clear, you know the seal on these are good. Doesn't mean to say that the ceramic tip's any good. Right, that's all for me. I'm hoping to have another couple of videos coming up soon. Uh, I've got one coming up on uh, taking apart the uh, quick release Tima quick release uh, couplings on the end. I've had a, a couple of requests on how they actually come apart. They're quite basic. Um, and hopefully I'm gonna do a, a, a video soon on nozzles and nozzle sizing. I've had a lot of emails and stuff over the um, winter period about nozzles and sizing nozzles, turbos, that kind of stuff, and pe why people aren't getting full um, pressure and flow from their machines. 
And it's normally because it's got the wrong size jet in it. So hopefully that video will be coming up soon. But that's all from me. Happy cleaning. Bye for now.